closed guard. A closed guard is actually like my, my safe space. So um, <clears throat> it's very hard to get closed guard on someone when you're when you're no gi. The, the grips are not there. Typically, I'm gonna go closed guard. I'm gonna grab a cross grip, put my foot on the hip, and pull in. Okay. You can do that with no gi. All right. You can go two on one. It works. Uh, it's just not as not as uh, not as easy. So what I typically do. Uh, when I want to get closed guard, I'm having a trouble combo getting guard going. Is I'll start kind of playing this flat butterfly guard, and I'm hoping that he'll almost start flattening me out a little bit. So I kind of get more of a comfortable space like this, okay? And what I'm gonna do is that whole pop, push it back, and I push it back just enough to pull him back into my closed guard. You okay, everybody? All right. So very, very simple. Is I wanna, I wanna get a hold of him. I need to get a hold of his upper body, but I have to create a little space in the hips. All right. So I kind of enter in and maybe I expect to get kind of flattened out. Once I do, on a pop, now my old legs open, I can pull my feet to the hips if I want, but once I get the space to open, I just pull my back in, establish my closed guard, okay? So kind of a, one of the ways uh, to do it. And I'll, I'll let you guys play, I'll, I'll give you two ways so you guys can play. Another way I like to do it is off the knee shield half. Uh, I will enter in, shove a leg in the middle, post, and get my knee shield. From there, I try, try, try to isolate this arm when I'm playing and I'm messing it. Hip into it, this leg comes out to the hip, and then pull him in the closed guard. So, it's another very simple way of doing it. Whereas I play with, especially if they start trying to like move this leg away, away, like, you know, they try to like sprawl out. And now it kind of gets very easier to get that leg out. All in all, I just go two on one and pull him in to a closed guard. Does that make sense? So let's just play with, uh, establishing closed guard off the ground, off a butterfly if you want half. Um, it, like I said, it's very, very hard to just grab closed guard with no gi. Because very simply, it just pushes down a leg. And it's very hard for me to get a grip and I'm gonna get past. All right? Make sense? Let's go. Head and shoulder. So no matter what, even if guys are strong here, all the way around, I'm just like pull the elbows and bring them in. And then once I get, I, I always try to establish a head crunch. It's like one of my first processes. That gives me, a little bit of a choice of his arms. So I bring him down, now his arms are there, I can establish my, my little higher guard. And I like to wait and see where he's gonna go. A lot of times, so far, so perfect. So let, let's just look at what Kate just did right here. He just stuffed that hand, turn. Okay. So this is kind of where, where Cole's guard comes in as a very dangerous guard. He wants to start, he starts stuffing that hand that's simply just <laughs> going to our traps, okay? So that, that stuff is gonna happen all the time in here. And that comes from the ability just being controlled on his head. He's gonna, he's gonna get something like, if you ever, I don't know if you guys ever rolled a Ben. Ben is like, you have, you have like, literally to be terrified of your arms. I'm, I'm, when, when, when I'm on top of Ben and he gets me, I'm like, oh no, you can't have anything. You know, because once I expose something, it's a trap and control an arm bar off of that, okay? So we're getting, I want you guys to have this, thinking that you need to break down posture no matter what. Sometimes you're two on one, sometimes you're on the elbows. You can reach up and grab the head, but most people are very aware that when you start coming up, they just check your belly, check your sternum, uh, and bring you back down to the ground. So my typical is always here, here, flare, pull, capture. And I always try to adjust my guard. I love the underhook side. I, I, I love my, my left side, my favorite side to go to. So when I get here, um, actually, let's go kind uh, of some basic things. When I get here, I always try to set up an overhook. I'll put my foot on the mat, drive this through, and if I can get my hand on the side of the head, I will. If not, I'm gonna hold right here, all right? Now it's a little bit of a process. I need to pass this hand over and get a little, uh, get a clinch here, all right? Once that clinch happens, my now my knee can pop out. And now I'm gonna go for Umapada, over the top. Now, with this Umapada, uh, I typically, again, through the Nogi, I don't even bother trying to go for a submission. It's all about getting that sweep and sitting back, okay? One of my, my absolute favorite sweeps, one of my absolute favorite sweeps. It's just a great principle. It's just getting all your weight and hips onto that shoulder and rotating. So again, very, very basic. All right, I flare, control. I don't look over the side, I feel comfortable, okay? I got both choices right now. I'm making that clinch, we're going back to that gable grip and using this blade and the skull. And I'm trying to always just kind of fuck with them here, all right? I really want to make it uncomfortable, all right? But I feel like I've got an opportunity on an elbow or sorry, an overhook, and I put the same side foot on that drive, I was like punch myself in the nuts, right? On that hip, if I can, I'm gonna support right away another side of his head. That's really important, okay? Because some guys, I don't know if you guys ever rolled Corey before, 
He'll take it on the hook on the side. On your hook, now move your body this way. All the way, all the way, all the way. And they'll start trying to smash pass this way. Can be very, very effective for guys with really strong hips. So, well, you want that underhook. So, I want, once I get that overhook, I want to try to get this hand on the other side of this head so it eliminates that overhook or that, that ability to pass there, and now I can start moving. All right. So, if you need, I see I have this kind of figure four grip. My overhook has to come out. When it comes out, it cups the shoulder, leg comes over. Leg comes over, drive both my feet together, keep the elbow pinned to my groin, and I just roll to my knees. Okay, and sit back. And sit back. I got great control of the arm, the submissions, or step over the head for even more security. Much different, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Does that make sense? Wanna try that one? Most of you guys have done this one before, correct? Yeah, it's what it's but. So it's one of those that you should probably have in your pocket uh, at all times, especially if you like playing that cold card. All right, go ahead. Other variations of it. It all comes off that overhook. So we're here again. Once I set my overhook on my side, I can you see how Kid already bent his arm. See how it's already starting to bend that way? Some guys will leave it kind of more straight like this. And you can simply arm bar, okay? I can make it worse by passing that foot over and bring it here. But typically once you pass it over, they give you a very deep bite on that underhook. Like they're trying to cup your shoulder. And that's a really good way to see that I can just drive this and punch it. But when you look at the elbow pit, it's facing at him. I don't punch down, I kind of punch out. You have to kind of feel that where he is. You could maybe get it in the straight a little bit, but you're really just gonna, again, pinching it here. And then this part drives wherever that arm is. Does that make sense? You're breaking your guard though, the minute you start the overhook process. Or? So I do, because I have to get on the hip, right? And if I get overhook here, it's really nothing. It's actually just kind of connecting us. I really need to get on the hip. In fact, if I have an overhook like that, I tend to let it go and I'll even start passing it then. Oh, then I'll okay. set it up. All right, I want to be on that hip. Sorry. Beforehand. The hip is, the, if you're not on the hip, and close guard and attacking the arms, you, you're not doing anything. It's just like an even battle, or if you get, like, like again, the tough guy on Corey on top, he's keeping you flat. And he's just smushing, smushing, working on the side. It sucks. Right. You've got to be on the hip and ready to attack. Okay. Yeah. How about for belly down on the armbar? <sighs> so you're coming over here. I, I won't go like, you mean like the belly down armbar here? Yeah. Yeah, I, I will go old school Cobra Kai. Just <laughs> that, you know, I like this one better. I tend to not go belly down. Do you go belly down on this one? Yeah. Uh, okay, feels good for you. I just like passing it over. Um, especially, like the Wapata, you need to pocket it in the hip. If it comes out, well then, let's go right, it's almost the same exact thing. I was keeping his leg a little higher compared to driving it through. See how it is driving it through, it's almost forced him into a roll, especially when I come up. And you're anchoring that elbow with your hand. Oh, you have to. Yeah. So that's what I was saying, I was saying to Chris. Geek grip is a lot easier with that. Well, yeah. I have the overhook, right? But once I go from Wapata, it has to come out and I just cup it. See how my hand's already in place? Now it just travels right to that elbow. It keeps it locked in there the whole time. So when I roll, I sit back. I've got control of it the whole time. Okay, that answer your question about the armbar? Yeah, also I don't know if you know this, but in, say you were not allowed to do a crushing submission, uh, would that be a crush coming up? No. No. They no. Mm. It's a more body sleep, yeah, yeah, that's, that's fine. There's no crush at all, yeah. Sure. yeah you're fine. All right, let's go. So, close guard overhook again. Um, here, the same thing, I come out here, and I start to go over the I like to bring my foot here a little bit, but I lose his arm because he pulls it out. I just cup his elbow, and I go right to his back. So I'm here, with my overhook, and I get to the side. He starts to pull. As soon as it comes out, here, and he pulls it out and just kind of post on it and use that to get up and go to his back. All right, so over here. Boom, get up here, I'm losing it. All right, go right to his back. And then the other thing I was gonna do, uh, I have the overhook, I'm pushing his head, I pull my foot out like I'm in a triangle and I just grab and squeeze. And I can even triangle right there. So 
that's kind of fun. It's over here. Push, pull my foot. And then I try and I crush the side of his neck. Boom. Figure for it. Or whatever. Alright, so try that and then try hopping to the back. <laughs> 